In this demo, I'm going to demonstrate how to build a simple scraper agent using Flow ICI. So I'm going to use agent flows right here. So I'm going to select that and then add new. So I'm going to start off from scratch. So the first thing I need to do is go to this plus sign here and I'm going to drag an agent. So you can find the agent right under sequential agents right there. So that's the agents part. This agent has two things that I need to fill in, which is access to the tools and a model that's going to guide its reasoning and so forth. So let's work on the tools first. So what I'm interested in building here is an agent that can pull information from the web. So it can scrape pages in real time. If I give it a link, it should be able to go to pick up information from that website, store that information, and I should be able to query that information using this agent. And I can update that database essentially. Specifically, I'm going to use a vector store for this. So let's build that out. So there is a thing called Retriever tool here. I'm going to search Retriever, and it's a tool, right? So it's expecting me to do a tool. So this will build out the Retriever component that I need, but it needs this to connect things. So this retriever has a name. I can give it a name. I could call it something like search web, something like that. And then here I could be very descriptive, but I'm going to do something really simple. So I'm going to hit searches and return related docs, something like that. Again, you can experiment with this. This is our first iteration of this project. So I'm just going to leave it as is, but you can experiment and iterate on this as much as you need. After that, I need a retriever. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to select a retriever, cancel that. And uh, what I'm looking for is a vector store. Let me go into vector store here. And there are different kinds of vector stores, popular ones. And there's an open source one, FISE, which I love to use because this project is going to work locally. So I don't really need something too sophisticated here. This is good enough for me. I'm going to drag this here to retriever. And then I need to give it a base path. So because this is the first time I'm collecting this information or scraping this information, I actually need to index it. And so I'm going to show you the process of indexing this. I'm actually going to select here this directory. So this needs to be a directory that exists. So in this case, you can see it here. It's FICE index, and I'm going to change this. This is usually different folders I have for different projects. And this one that I have is prompting. So this already exists. So FICE index prompting exists under documents here. That's the directory. All right, so that looks good. Now I need to add document and embeddings. For embeddings, you can choose any embedding service that you already use. Or you can use something that's very common. So I'm going to use OpenAI embeddings. I use OpenAI models a lot. So this makes sense for me to use. I'm going to drag this here. And then here, I'm going to select my credentials. Now, you'll need to create your credentials here. It is very straightforward. All you need is an API key. Go to your dashboard inside OpenAI and create a key and bring it here. And then just upload it here to connect your models here. And this one is just the model name. I'm not going to change that. But you can experiment with the different ones that are available here. So after that, I need... A document okay so for document what i need here is i'm not going to use any local pdf document or file i am actually going to use a scraper so this is why i said initially this was a scraper agent and this one that i'm using is called chibio there are a couple of them that are available here inside of flowwise but this is the one i regularly use so this one connects to the document and then here is where i would provide the url that i'm scraping the project that i will be scraping here is this prompt engineering guide and my idea with this agent is that i'm actually going to do something useful with that in fact i want to build something like an agent that can be used here within this documentation that we have on how to prompt models better there's a lot of content here and it's getting really hard to find key information so potentially what i want to build is like a chat agent that you can interact with and can give you different tips and can pull information from different places and so on. That's kind of the rough idea. And so what I want to do with this first iteration of this project is just work on this prompting guide, scrape it, and then test on it and see if it can answer basic questions related on the information that the prompt engineering guide already contains. So the link to the project is prompt prompting guide. I have it here already. So that's the link. And after that, there is a text splitter. And I recommend using a text splitter here. So the one I want to use is recursive. 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 This is a very popular one to start very standard experiments. I'm going to do that here. I'm not going to discuss the different splitters and so on. That's probably another video that I'll be doing. We want to chunk information, reduce it you know, to smaller chunks, and then embed those information and index them in our vector store here, which is Vice. So the chunk size is 1000, and then I can easily experiment with different chunk sizes. But every time I change this, I would have to re-index my information. That's the only thing that I would like to say there. So once I have that part, then it looks like that's ready. And the last part I want to add here is this part of this agent, okay, start. Because we need to tell the agent where it actually begins 
where the conversation begins. So for this, I need to go here and I need to direct it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this start nodes and end nodes. So the start node, again, starting point of the conversation. This will tell the agent this is where we're starting. And so I'm just going to connect that there. And this start node actually requires a chat model. There's also agent memory. This is something for another video. But this chat model here is I can go and select the OpenAI chat model. Chat, open AI. Chat, open AI. So this is the one I'm looking for. I'm going to drag that there. And then I can go and connect this here. So now I have my chat model. This is the one that's going to be doing all the planning, reasoning, and enable the agent to call tools when it needs to. So the connect credentials, again, I'm going to use my same credentials here. And for the model, usually one will pick a good model that's good at reasoning and planning. So I'm going to select the latest one, GPT-4 Mini. This is cheaper as well, but you can choose any model that you want or any provider that you're already using. As for the explanation for the system prompt here, also you can get very specific about what you want, but I'm just gonna keep it as is, the default. I think it's reasonable. And then I'm just gonna call this a scraper agent. So I'm just gonna name that here. All right, there's one more piece that's missing here. We have the beginning of the conversation. We also need the end of the conversation. So I'm gonna go here and let me see here. I will put this here. This is the end of the conversation. The notes, the end of the conversation. Now I need to connect this here and that should complete the workflow here. Okay, so this is ready to go. So what I'll do now is I'm going to demonstrate it to you, but before I do that, and I'll forget the important part here, which is I need to be able to index this information before I'm able to chat with information. So I'm going to go to manage links, and you will see here that I can fetch links. So this fetches the links. This is a scraper again, and it's going to fetch a few links here. Not all the links are here, but I can manually add links if I want. But these are okay because this is just for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to go and save this. So it's going to scrape those links. So before it does that, I'm going to save this. I'm going to call this Graper Agent Prompting Guide. I'm going to save that. All right, so that's saved. And notice that this green icon appears. And this is basically prompting you to index this information. So it's called upserting. I'm going to go here, and you will see that it's telling you you can upsert this information. So we can go and upsert here. It takes a bit of time to do this. It really depends on how much information it's indexing. But you can see here, what I really like about this is that it's telling you how much it added, how much it updated, skipped, deleted, right? So if you're re-indexing, you will see that it's telling you whether it's updating things and so on. So this is information it picked up. You can see that this is definitely a scraper. It has all this JavaScript code here, and it has information about the website itself and so on. So that's really nice to see. And there's a lot of information that is scraped. That's ready to go. So I can experiment with this now. I'm going to close this and then I can save it again. Okay, don't forget to save. And once I've saved this, I think this is ready to be used. And I'm going to try it now. So I'm going to go to this chat icon here. Everything in Flowwise is going to happen through this chat icon, okay? But the cool thing about Flowwise is that it, they have an API as well. So you can use this entire workflow and interact with it via some API as well. It's very flexible in that sense. But I'm just going to use this chat interface because it's just easier for me to demo it. So here, I'm going to ask it a question. What are the prompting techniques you recommend? Very simple question. So it's taking some time because it needs to decide whether it's going to call tools and so forth. All right, so there is a bunch of information that it sent. And let's look at it bit by bit here. So this is a scraper agent, okay? So I'm going to actually enlarge this just so you can see it. So the scraper agent calls a search web, and the search web basically is telling you exactly that tool and the information it's pulling, okay? So the input to that was prompting techniques. You can see it there. So all of that is handled by the scraper agent. So this is the tool usage capability at play, and it's telling the retriever system that this is what I want to search for, search for that information, and this is the information that was returned. And so here we go. And then the agent takes it. So this is the language model at work here. And here are some effective prompting techniques that can enhance your interactions with language models. So it says, Fuchsia prompting summarizes that, gives me a, an example of that. And then it says instruction-based prompting. So there is some instruction here, chain of thought, meta, all of these things we have in our guide. So these are all great tips. So this one, experimentation, well, it's a good advice on how to do prompt engineering, but it's not necessarily a prompting technique specifically. So I can be more specific with the question and just test the agent to see if it's doing the right job with the queries. So that's something that I have to evaluate on. So that's the example. This is a very basic example of how I scrape a website and I can now interact with it. And in the future, 
I want to build this out as an actual service. So I'm working on that already and it will eventually be made available in the prompting guide. So our users and learners can interact with such an agent. And again, pull information from the guide, but also pull information from the web if it needs to pull that information from the web. So that's an exciting project that I'm working on and I will have updates about that. Please leave your questions in the comments if this is interesting to you. If you have any ideas or maybe any requests on this type of agents, and I will look into those comments and see if I can build something out really quickly here using Flowwise AI or any of the other tools that I use to build agents. I want for us to have deeper discussions in terms of design patterns to build these agents and so on. This is something I'm working very hard on. And we have developed courses as well. If you are interested in, I'm going to leave a link in the description below to check out our recent courses on introduction to AI agents. If this is something that interests you, we use Flowwise for that course. So it's the same tool that I'm showing you here. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll see you all in the next one.